What's going on, Al? What's going on? Hey. <laughs> What's crack lagging? I'm hanging out, man. I, you know I need you on this podcast. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to have anything good to say, man. I'm a rookie. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, man. I look up to you more than you. Man. So you better calm that down real quick. So all I got to say is, you know, we're we're good friends, so uh, you're on the podcast. You know, um, we don't we don't have to uh, go uh, in depth in anything you don't want to talk about. But you know, from a personal standpoint, your story is amazing. But I mean, we could go as in depth as you want to go, brother. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, welcome to the Asian My Show. Everybody here, when they listen to this, if they don't know who Vic Med is. This guy is the real deal, man. So, Al, I think you say that about everybody. I'm just a rookie. Uh, <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm a beginner at this. You better stop real quick. <laughs> everybody on the age of my show, uh, on the comment below that I'm going to pin today, it's going to be a big med. If you need somebody that actually knows what they're talking about because they're actually doing it, then this guy's actually doing it instead of guys like me that just talk all day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, so, you know um, where is a good place to begin, honestly? Where would you like to begin, man? I think your story is super interesting, Vic. You know, I really do. And um, how far would you like to take it? Uh, what, what part of my story? All of it is interesting, but it matters what part that you would like to share. I, I don't I don't mind. I don't mind uh I'm a I'm an open book. Okay, so if you're gonna open book then let's let's uh start at the beginning real quick. Uh how the heck did you even get into trucking? Uh how did I get into trucking? Uh there was a pastor that uh I don't know, he seen something in me and uh he just asked me one day, well what is it that I wanna do? And I told him trucking, and he ended up uh, paying for my schooling and uh, my license. Wait up. Can anyone get that plug, or how did you get that plug? Uh, how did I get that plug? Uh, I had a homie that was going to that church, and he invited me over to the church one time, and I was just in the parking lot. I was picking up my old lady. And I was picking my homie up and his old lady. That's when the pastor came out, and he just started talking to me. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, of course. I wasn't, um, you know, in my car. You know, I was in somebody else's car. Didn't ask permission for his car, but, yeah, I was driving his car. <laughs> and yeah. out of nowhere, this pastor just, he just saw the, the kindness. He could just see right through. I don't know what the hell he see, but, uh. Yeah, that's that's the story. That's crazy. So, okay, so he paid for your school, and then he paid for everything. And uh, did you ever repay him back in any way, Vic? Yeah, I, I, I hope I did. I, I think I paid him more than enough. Uh, yeah, I gave him my first check when I got my first check. And then after that, uh, I gave him, uh, I would say, like 50% of my check for about two years. So you paid him back for the school, so... He didn't even, did, did he even ask for the money back, or is that just something you wanted to do? No, he never asked for the money back. I just did it because uh, I, I just felt like I was obligated. Wow, man, that's cool. So um, so for people that don't know on the Asian My Show, Vic here, he, he actually, uh, he, you know, he runs his own trucking business, which means that he has people that drive for them. And is that still true, Vic? You still got your uh, same employees that are working for you? That's still true, and as a matter of fact, I'm on my way right now to pick up my other truck that I just bought uh, Tuesday. I didn't pick it up Wednesday because I had a oil leak and uh, the brake pads were all bad, so the dealer's taking care of that, so I'm on my way to pick up my next truck. Wait up. So how many trucks you got right now running, including yourself? Because I know you're running one of them too, right? Right now, I'm five. I'm five with the one that I'm picking up right now. Wow. And for people that don't know, uh, that haven't had an opportunity to follow Vic, um, 
he's actually uh, just recently uh, bought a brand new custom home just built, huh? <laughs> yay, yay. Hell yeah, baby. Yeah. Hey, I'm so proud yeah. of you, man. Not everybody can do something like that, man. And, uh, you thanks know, a lot. Thing, man. So what I really want to get into now is since you got five trucks, how the heck did that happen? I mean, were you working for a company first and out of nowhere you said, I want to be an owner operator and I'm going to buy five trucks? You know, how did that well, it, it, there was something like that. I I leased on to a company. I worked for the company at first. Then uh, the safety manager asked me if I wanted to lease out a truck. I didn't know anything about leasing out a truck. She pitched me her line, and it sounded good. So I drove just that one truck for about a year, and then I decided to just kind of grow with the company, and I ended up getting I, – I ended up buying two more trucks. Wow. So – how but they were all leased on to them. Like, tell us so that we can learn. Because just say everyone right now that is just an owner operator and they, they're driving one truck. How the heck do you get a second truck? Well, the best way, I mean, the way I see it, if you don't have that much money, the best way to do it is uh, go with the company, a small company that's leasing out trucks. And, you know, you'll come out of pocket less, you know. So that's that's my my thing, you know, that's the easiest way for me, you know, because I didn't have to come out of pocket for insurance, a down payment for the insurance. I didn't have to come out of pocket for a registration for the permits or anything, because all I did was get the the paper from the dealer with all the specs on the truck. I gave that piece of paper to the company and the company insured the truck, registered the truck, put the permits on it. And then I brought back the truck into California. So, okay, so just say I'm a dummy and I don't understand anything that you're talking about. Uh, is it basically, for example, how they lease your truck? They're allowing you to basically buy and lease or lease another truck, but put a driver in it? Is that what that is? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. What companies would do something like this? I mean, you know, a lot of people want to make money like this. What companies should they look for when you say small mom and pop? I couldn't tell you out of California. All I know is California, Alex. That's all I know. Hey, so any uh, names you could drop uh, from California? Yeah. Uh, you got Redbird. Uh, you got uh, Universal. Um, you got Hub Group. You got uh, Roadrunner. Uh, Gordon. I've heard of Gordon and Roadrunner. What's that? I've heard of Gordon and Roadrunner. Yeah, yeah, they lease out trucks, and, you know, you can bring on trucks with you if you want, or you can lease out a truck th through them, and then go buy a truck, give them the specs of the truck, and they'll insure the truck, they'll put everything under their insurance, register the truck and everything, and you just drive it back into California, and, I mean, of course, they're going to deduct the insurance payments and uh, registration and permits every month. You know why you're working with them. Mm. So okay, so you so how much money do I need to come out with per se if I'm ready to lease my second truck? How much money do I need to get down or anything like that? What would you recommend? Well, that's the thing. You don't want to lease. You don't want to get a truck in California. Everybody knows California. I mean, it's it's expensive. What I do is I go out of state and get my trucks. Like, for instance, I went to Texas to get my first truck, my second truck. I went and got it out of state. I went and got it in Texas, and they charged me 5500 just for the down payment. Really? And because the company is backing it up and buying it, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. And now, here's the big question, and the one that I'd be scared of because, in a sense, I run one truck. Um, the biggest thing that I'd worry about, now that I brought the second truck home, I got to make these monthly payments. How the heck do you get a driver in that truck? What do you do? Well, you know, the main thing is you got to be a, a step ahead of the game. So before you go get that truck, you got to make sure you have a driver. So what you want to do is the truck that you're driving, you want to put a driver in that truck, let him run it for a week. That way you'll know that the guy is a good driver. He's going to do his job. He's going to be there every day. Once you're satisfied with that, then you go get you another truck. Oh, see, for everybody listening to the Asia My Show, man, that's a power, power tip right there. Is if you got one truck, let the guy drive your truck for two weeks or something like that, 
and see if he knows what he's doing, right? Correct. And what's a good amount of money to be paying these people? I mean, um, you know, because for people that don't know, uh, you have a, a, a fleet of trucks that you run locally, right? Correct. How much, in general, if you run locally, would a, a truck, you know, make you so that how much do you need to pay your guy? You know, what's a good number to start with, you know, when you're new with it? Well, I mean, you can you can do a whole bunch of bunch of ways. You can do percentage. You can do salary. Uh, you can do per load. You can do a, a whole bunch of ways. Like for instance, right now I'm running under two accounts, which is the Walmart account and then the UPS account. The Walmart account is paying me nine hundred bucks a day. Nine. So, so. I can tell the driver, you know what? I'm going to pay you 20 bucks an hour. And that comes out to about 2000 a week. Mm. I mean, a thousand, a thousand a week. Right. But if it's a good driver, I want to keep that driver. Right. So I'm paying him daily $250. So at the end of the week, he's getting 12, uh, 1,250 bucks. Okay. So you can make some good money. Now here's the thing. So I love that Vic. So here's the biggest thing. So when you first started, you leased these trucks off these small companies, right? I leased them out to them. I didn't lease, lease them from them. Ah, so you leased them to them. So for people that are new, you just recommend that maybe they could lease it from a small company just to get started, right? Yes. But yes. Your, your first truck, your first truck should be leased from them. In other words, they're going to send you to their dealer to pick up their truck. Got it. Got it. And then when you get the ball rolling and you kind of understand how the game works and you pay off, you know, your truck and the second truck, that's when the next company you go to or that company, now you would lease it to them instead of from them. Exactly. I love that. So, man. I don't have, I don't have no trucks leased from them. In other words, they didn't send me to their dealer to pick out a truck from their dealer. I went out and picked out my own dealer, my own state, and brought them trucks back. Right. And when you did it that way, because you've been in the game a lot longer, at that point, are you just buying your a truck straight out and then leasing it to those companies? No, I'm not buying them straight out. I still have uh, truck payments on them. Right. But you're basically, but here's the thing. These small companies, they'll, they'll lease them from you. Yes, yes. And you don't got to find the drivers when you lease it or because they have recruiters and things like that, do they find the drivers or do you still find the drivers? You know, sometimes I have luck when the company does call me and say, hey, Victor, look, I got a driver available. It does happen. Oh. But nine out of ten times, I do have to put a, an ad on Indeed or a Craigslist, and that's how I get my drivers. I see. So for everyone out there listening to the Asia My Show, so you understand this, if you want to get into the fleet business, the easiest way is, like Vic said, lease from the company. But then once you start paying off that lease truck, because they got to play, you got to pay a balloon on that lease truck, right? They want to buy it, right? Yes. But after they pay that truck off and they pay theirs off, now you could take your trucks to a different company and you could lease your trucks to them. That's the ticket. So, all right. So that's that's good. Now here's the thing. What if you do the local game, right, Vic? Correct. Would you recommend the local game or the OTR game now that they're running just a two or two trucks? You know, they're starting out. You know, what's the, what's the best thing? You, you know, uh, that's uh, that's personal preference because okay. I've done I've done the OTR, I've done the regional, and now I'm doing the local. Um, and, you know, it's just personal reference. Some people, they, they swear up and down that, you know, they make a whole bunch of money out there on the road. Me, personally, I, I don't think so. Uh, what I look at is numbers and wear and tear and my guys spending time with their family. That's what I look at. If they're out there on the road for a whole week, yeah, they're going to get a $3,000 check, but I'm putting wear and tear on the truck. I'm putting a whole bunch of fuel, and these guys ain't spending no time with their family. And drivers like that, they're a dime a dozen, you know, that want to just run, 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 run. 
So mm-hmm. I like local, and for me, it's good money. I hear you. So where's after when you get, they get to uh, uh, just at your level with one or two trucks, and they understand and they're working the local game. Uh, where where do they find the jobs at? I mean, do you just have how'd you get these contracts? I don't want to get too much into your personal and hurt your business in any way, Vic. But you know, imagine a new guy trying to run his truck and run one more truck. You know, what load boards or you know what advice would you have for him? You know where I'm getting at, Vic? Yeah, yeah. The best the best thing to do is once you get your authority, make sure you take that truck to get inspected by DOT. Go to a scale house, get it inspected because that first report that DOT puts in their system is critical. Mm-hmm. After that, you can get on any load board. My best advice, since you're just starting, you don't have much money to spare. You want to go to them free load boards, like for instance, Next Trucking, Convoy, Cargomatic, all them free apps, and just start getting you. You know, one or two loads from, from these load boards. Once these brokers start putting information on your CSA score, your CSA, uh, report, then you start going with the big guys. CH, CH Robinson, uh, Coyote, uh, DAT load board. Once you get there, after I say about six, seven months, CH, uh, Robinson and Coyote, they will eventually get in contact with you and ask you, hey, uh, how many trucks do you have available? Look, we have have this contract. But, yeah, that, that's the way I got hooked up with C.H. Robinson and Coyote. That's how I was able to get really? the contracts. Okay, so basically to basically say what Vix is talking about, guys and girls, is get your own authority. Before you even want to start a fleet, get your own authority. Become an owner-operator, right? Correct. Start running off of these free boards so that you could basically get your CSA scores uh, up. And basically, now you have background, right? You have experience behind your belt. Exactly. And then now with the experience, okay, keep on going, Vic. Let us know. Now, 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 that's not exactly the way I did it. What I did is I got one truck under my own authority, and I left the rest of the trucks leased onto the company. So the other trucks were running under that company's uh, name and numbers and insurance. And I just had one truck. Oh. I pulled it out, and I started running under my authority. I got my own insurance. I got my own CA, my DOT number. And I just, just to get my feet wet with just with one truck. So as soon as I got recognition and everybody knew who my company was, and I started getting more to work, I didn't have to look into the load boards and all that. That's when I started pulling out the rest of the trucks and started running them on my own, me and my wife. I love it. I love it. So that's basically the the biggest part. So in a nutshell, I know it's not this simple. Yeah, You start out with one truck. Maybe you don't have the money like most people. The banks won't give you money. So you lease on with one truck uh, with the company, right? Yes. You lease on a second truck with the company like these small mom and pop companies that you talked about that would allow you to do that. After you pay off some of these trucks, right? Then you take one of the trucks and you basically go owner op your own authority and then start getting your own CSA scores and getting your own background up by using these free load boards, right? Yes. And then after, as, as you feel comfortable, you pull your other truck out because really what you're really doing is you're helping the other company succeed if you're doing correct. it right, right? Correct, correct. But if you're now, doing things wrong, <laughs> you're not hurting your own company, which is a good thing too, right? Exactly. Now, another thing, I didn't I didn't pay off my trucks before I pulled them out of, of the leasing contract. I did not pay them off. I was still paying on them. Mm. But having your own authority, it's way more money you can double your money if if you look at the numbers from somebody that has their own authority and somebody that's leased on to a company your money is gonna double once you have your own authority mm. so, so i was i i didn't have my trucks paid off but once we we got the hang of what was going on how to do things how to book our own loads and stuff that's when we decided to pull out the the, the trucks and run them under our own authority because it's a big headache trying to dispatch trucks 
trying to deal with with uh, drivers, you know, because you have your drivers that don't want to do this load because it's too far or too many hours or they take forever to offload you or to load you. It's a big headache. So the best thing to do is leave them trucks behind. Let 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 the company run them. You don't have to have the headache of that until you get the hang of it. Once you run that truck for about four or five months and you get the hang of dispatching, that's when you bring on your trucks, whether they're paid off or not. Just bring them on because you're going to double your money once you have your own authority and you start booking your own loads. Man. So, okay. So it sounds like you need a dispatcher. You're lucky. You have a lovely wife that you guys are uh, business owners as a team, right? And you make it work. Now, yes. do you recommend that people that don't have that luxury to go out and get a dispatcher or should they start with dispatching themselves first? What is, what, what's your advice on that? Dispatch yourself. Dispatch yourself. If you have, if you have four trucks, you can dispatch yourself. That is not a problem. Uh, you know, eventually you're going to have to get out of the truck, you know, and dispatch all these trucks. But four trucks, you can dispatch them yourself. Getting, getting a dispatcher. That's another, that's another person, another personality that you have to deal with. So four yeah. trucks is not a problem as far as being, uh, dispatching them yourself. So would you say for most people, Vic, if you want to be your own business owner, because most people want to be where you're at, you, you're at the dream job right now that people wish they had. Uh, would you say four trucks is a good amount of trucks for a small business that one person can run themselves and be happy and proud about that? That would be perfect. That would be perfect. The money is great and the headaches are minimal. Mm. So let's talk about these headaches, Vic. So we talk about all the good and we're giving people all this benefit. So before I let you go, Vic, let's talk about some of the gruesome. We talked a little bit about how some of these drivers don't want to take loads. So let's be honest here. Um, being your own trucking business owner, Fleet owner, mm-hmm. yeah. There's there's a lot of good stuff and a lot of good sounding, but let's talk about some of that creepy stuff. It's near Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you got to tell them the truth, Vic, right? Because when yeah, it's good, it's yeah. good. You know, when it rains, yeah. it pours, right? Yeah, exactly. So, no, the you know the the bad thing is is like I said, you know, uh, some some drivers they get too comfortable. And, uh, you know, before they, before you know it, uh, you know, they don't want to do certain loads. Uh, they only want to run certain hours. Um, they'll come up with an excuse to go to the customer, to the shipper, to deliver the load. Um, you know, they're just like, like little kids, you know, so you pretty much have to play reverse psychology on these guys to kind of push them to do the work. After they get comfortable, because I mean, nine out of ten guys, that's, that's what happens, especially doing local work. You know, they, they just get comfortable and they want to run game 24 seven. They're running game, you know, why they can't do this, why they can't do that and why they can't be in tomorrow or the following day, stuff like that. Man. So, so I could see how that could definitely be a headache. Now, here's the, uh, one of the last questions I have for you, Vic is, where the heck do you park these trucks? <laughs> <laughs> I have problems parking one truck, baby. Where do you park all these damn trucks? Well, well, the good thing about it is the contracts that we have, these are mega companies that we're hauling for. So they give us the privilege of parking our equipment at their yard. Oh, so you can work and, real like that. And the good thing about it is I try to jump on contracts that only – uh, use power only. Power only is only the truck. So you don't need the trailer. So them are sweet accounts for me where, when, uh, I don't have to put a trailer in there and spend money on renting mm. a trailer or buying a trailer. That's, yeah. that's a sweet account for me. So when you say you own five trucks, that means five trucks with no trailers, right? Exactly. Ooh, you making money, boy. I like that. I like <laughs> that, man. man. You the man. Yeah. You know. Here's the thing. What is the best so if you're just running the truck and you're running local jobs, which most people dream of being home and being their own boss, Vic, what would you say the best loads to take are? Are they flatbed loads? Are they dry van? What, what are, you know, what is it? I've, I've never done flatbed work, so I, I couldn't tell you, uh, what flatbed work is, but 
I do know reefer, and reefer is the one that pays the best. It's a lot of headaches. It's a lot of headaches with reefer because you got to clean out that trailer. Mm. Uh, if you're seeing that on the street, that trailer's got to be at a certain temperature. So you got to run that trailer. You got to make sure that reefer's on at a certain temperature because if you dock that trailer and if it's not at a certain temperature, they're not going to load you. They're going to say, we got to wait for that trailer to be at a certain temperature. But yeah, that's what pays the best is reefer. And reefer, they don't have a slow season because reefer, I mean, everybody needs cold food, cold drinks. I hear you, man. That's genius, man. That's that's genius, Vic. So the last question I have is for anyone that's interested in growing and basically being like you one day, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, if they jump on your YouTube channel or anything like that, I mean, can can the people from the Asian Mind Show reach out to you? I don't want these people reaching yeah. out to you if, if you don't want it. <laughs> heck yeah, heck yeah, they can reach out to me. That's what I'm here for, man. I'm trying to I'm trying to help everybody out so that everybody can grow and make some money. Uh, I try to help people out with their trucks. I'm not a certified mechanic, but I work on my own stuff, you know, because mechanics rip us off, the dealers rip us off. So I have a lot of videos, you know, working on trucks. Mm, so here's the, so I just thought of the last question. If you were going to build a fleet, and I think I know the answer already. <laughs> what's the best truck? What's the best motor? And what's the best year? <laughs> what should you be playing with? You tell me. You tell me right now. You know, I'm I'm the wrong person to 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 answer that question. I I see it all the time. I am the wrong person because I am prejudiced towards any other truck and Freightliner. I love a Freightliner. I don't care what people say. Uh, I can work on that truck with my eyes closed. I, I love the truck. I love the engine. So I'm sorry. That's, that's, that's just my personal reference. And I don't care what anybody says. That's, that's my truck. So I'm the wrong person to answer that question. <laughs> I do that answer. And, you know, no, honestly though, uh, you know, t uh, to you and to your, to your wife, you know, I, I thank you. You guys are, you know, always a pleasure, Vic. And, you know, and I love it that, you know, on a personal level, you and I are great friends, you know. And so I just, I wish the best for you, man. And shoot, I, I thank you for this phone call. You know what I mean? I appreciate you calling out. And, you know, we appreciate you and uh, Jenna. And we're always watching you guys. Thank you for calling. Uh, thank you for putting me on your broadcast. I really appreciate that. And thanks for all the videos that you're putting out there for everybody to uh Learn the trucking business, and hopefully uh, you can uh, touch somebody and they'll follow your footsteps, bro. I hope not, because half my videos, I'm just taking off my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Man, but, you know, hey, God bless you, Vic, and uh, um, I'll talk to you soon. And anyone from the Asia My Show, I'm sorry, but Vic already said, blow him up on his channel. Did the Asia My Show sent you? He'd say, hey, Asia My Show said that. You said it's cool that you're going to show us how to start a fleet. You know what I mean? Heck yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> man, good stuff, Vic. Man, I'll let you go, man. I know you're a busy boss. All right. All right. Thanks a lot for calling, man. Appreciate you. All right. Thank you, boss.